A lot of the people who were here, they were taking those items and throwing them through these windows, which is why you're seeing a lot of this damage here. We just got that update from IMPD within the last five minutes that that suspect has now been pronounced dead at Eskenazi Hospital. Starting to throw rocks at police, frozen bottles of water, even kicking in some of the glass at the city county building, which is also the police headquarters. If you take a closer look behind me, this is the heart of Indianapolis. We're sitting here looking at it vandalized this morning. Fans and spectators aren't allowed to enter this time around. I've seen some clinging onto the gates just so they can get a feeling of race weekend. You were the chief at the time when all of these things were taking place. Do you have anything to say about that? I don't know. This is just <laughs> like... Okay, I can just grab, grab it. by the lip. You yes. told them that you believe that that video was edited. I know that. By who? Yes. I'm not for sure. We've just been able to confirm that information through the coroner here in Delaware County that three people were found dead inside this house fire. Police are telling us as long as it remains peaceful, as long as it's not violent or rowdy or anything like that, they will not arrest any of these people. Day two of that recovery effort now surpassing that 24 hour mark and crews stayed out here until at least nine o'clock last night and started their search again this morning as early as 5 a.m. All right, we are live and wait, what's the name again? Nervioso. All right. All right, Darius and Nervioso live at Bankers Nervioso. Life Fieldhouse. Darius, you just found your new profile picture. Fox 59's Darius Johnson joining us live in the newsroom to show us the steps the school took right away. Yeah, good afternoon, Ray and Beer Shell. The school was not willing to reveal exactly how many people may have been exposed to the student who tested positive, but we're told those who were exposed were not at school today. Instead, they were at home in quarantine for the next 14 days, and school officials say a case like this was only a matter of time. There's no way that you can completely keep that out of a school corporation with 4,400 kids, or even if you have 300 kids in a school, you're likely going to have it at some point. The fourth school district to open in central Indiana this week already has a student who tested positive for COVID-19. A Greenfield Central Junior High School student who was awaiting results tested positive. Superintendent Dr. Harold Olin says their plan was immediately put in place. We immediately pull that student from class. We isolate them in a specific place in the, the clinic, get the kid home, we start doing contact tracing, which means we go to those teachers, we get a, a seating chart, we find out who is in a close proximity to them. And I use that term close proximity. It means within six feet for 15 minutes or longer. And that's why I was really hesitant to send my children back to begin with. Patricia Wood's daughter is an eighth grade student who is part of the 15% in the district participating in virtual learning at home. I mean, it, it was really a no brainer for me. You know, like I said, the numbers have just gone up so fast in the last couple of weeks. The Hancock County Health Department says your child should not be attending school if they have COVID symptoms, been tested tested and are awaiting results, been in direct contact or around someone who has tested positive or has a fever of 99.5 degrees. I mean, not only are you risking your family, but you're risking everybody else's family as well. And it's just not worth it. Superintendent Olin says some families requested to keep their kids home after learning of the positive case. We want to work with families. We are here to serve this community. For us to maintain this long term, we just need to make sure that, that kids are coming to us healthy. I, I do think that they're handling it as best as they can. Unforgettable moments in Monument Circle as Officer Brianne Leith is 1042, but never forgotten. We don't understand this. We're asking why. Questions echoed by strangers as to why a 24 year old who put her life on the line daily is being laid to rest. We could have been friends. If I would have known her, I don't even know her personally, but I'm there for her and I'm there for her family because I'm thinking about them. Sharing emotion due to the similarities after serving five years in the Navy. In a way, either with military service, police service, whatnot, I don't like to say the word sacrifice, but there is a common thread through all of us that kind of take that step toward that type of work. Silence as a hearse makes a victory lap around Monument Circle with her brothers and sisters in blue surrounding her one final time. It just breaks my heart, you know, for for her, her colleagues. But there is light coming out of the darkness that has covered this city. We do see a lot of strength coming out of this and um, a lot of compassion. A long road to healing and recovery. I feel for her son because there's going to be moments in life and 
You just need your mother. Just know the prayers will go on. God does hear our prayers and you'll you'll truly never get over losing a child. Um, but I just want them to know that they're in my thoughts and prayers and as many others. If we get derailed doing something that has absolutely no merit and investigating something with, without any merit at all, it, it just it slows down, bogs down the whole system. We then have to spend time reviewing the case, looking at the case, deciding whether we file charges. That's what Muncie Police Chief Nathan Sloan and Prosecuting Attorney Eric Hoffman have been dealing with for the past week. Dylan Moody was charged with false informing and misuse of 911 after repeatedly calling dispatch to claim a family member broke into his home, beat him, and stole money. Police determined that was false. False informing is sort of the criminal equivalent of libel or slander, that you are lying or making something up about another person uh, in this instance that another person has perpetrated a crime against you. In a separate case, Andrea Hughes claimed excessive force. She was arrested for an OWI and disorderly conduct at a Taco Bell in February. Police say she refused a field sobriety test and made death wishes against officers families. What happened to me happened February 4th. It had nothing to do with the George Floyd incident whatsoever. But on June 4th, she filed a complaint saying the arrest in Muncie officer put his knee in her neck and back. I asked her why it took her so long to report it. She blamed COVID. Things were closed, offices were closed to the public mm -hmm. as far as me being able to follow through making the complaint. Which is not true. There are man hours that go back to not only reviewing that, but interviewing the officers and then going back and checking the veracity of all the information that we've got and just making sure that it's absolutely false before we before we put it to bed. And that takes some time. But those on both sides are hoping this comes to a conclusion before more time is spent. It, it takes a toll when we're trying to rebuild trust with the public. You know, accountability is a two way street. I just hope that uh, justice is served. I was done wrongly. Darius Johnson is live at the protest this evening. Darius. And right now we're live here at IMPD's Northwest District here. You can see there are upwards of about 100 people here protesting for day eight. Now they did move the protest here to the Northwest District today. It has been downtown for the past eight days because they are calling for justice in the case of Drajan Reed. Now I did speak with Mayor Hogsett and Chief Taylor earlier today. I was hoping to do that in person, but we still actually got some answers. They have decided to follow a California use of force policy where officers will begin training training as early as July 6th. Now this is what many of these protesters behind me have been asking and calling for for the past eight days. What we need in America, what we need in Indianapolis is a process of healing that is not implemented but lived. A powerful message from the city's top leadership and a push for change from African Americans after becoming exhausted in the fight for racial justice. We must hear the anguished cries of our black neighbors who were born into a system where from the moment of birth they are forced to bear the weight of over 400 years of oppression. In response to those cries, Mayor Joe Hogsett and Chief Randall Taylor announced the modification of the use of force policy. Among the changes, restrictions on chokeholds prohibiting officers from firing shots into or from moving vehicles and better de-escalation training. And I am totally supportive of these changes and believe that through these changes, the people of this community will be served in a better way. I asked Chief Taylor if these policies will mitigate the distrust in law enforcement, preventing black parents from teaching their kids how to respond to police as they have for decades. He says this isn't the first time he's heard this and he wants to change the community's perception of IMPD officers. We want them to have a positive experience with law enforcement. We want to be able to talk to them, uh, tell them, um, you know, that we're, we're looking out for them, but we also want them to be able to have an open dialogue with us. Uh, about their concerns and how we respond. I think that's only fair. And what's important to note from our leaders is this change marks a new beginning, not the end. These policies are important. And once implemented, we will have a better city than ever before. 
Now, as for this weekend, there is a curfew for both Friday and Saturday from 8 p.m. until 6 a.m. The first offense will be an educational approach. The second will be a violation of curfew, which is a misdemeanor where you could face a fine or jail time. But right now you can see that this is a very peaceful protest. People just chanting, writing their messages so their voices can be heard right here outside the police district. And police are saying they will not interfere with that or make any arrests as long as it stays how it is right now. That's the very latest on the northwest side. I'm Darius Johnson. Back to you in the studio.